Um, so, hello, uh, papers we love. Um, uh, this is really exciting for me because, uh, as, as Renzo said, Andrew, Andrew put a thing in our company chat saying, does anyone have a paper they love? And, um, and I've been obsessed with this paper for, for probably nine months at this point, really, really obsessed by it. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to, to evangelize and everything else, and I, I hope you'll come away understanding at least a bit of it. Um, what I will say is it's not a very long paper. Uh, it was actually written as, I'm caught on a wire, as an abstract for a uh, conference that Phil wanted to attend. And it actually got declined, so I don't know what that says about the state of the paper, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, so I called it Comon Ads All the Way Down, and I, I borrowed this conversation that William James had with the lady in the audience about Comon Ads in sometime around 1880. Um, if you don't recognize the quote, it was originally Turtles, and uh, basically everywhere it says uh, Comon Ads, replace it with Turtles. Um, that's about it. One Ed was still there. Um, so I am Tom, if I'm on GitHub. If I'm on Twitter, I'm slightly less confident in my own identity. Um, you, can, you can read my blog at tomharding.me. I work for Habito, always hiring. It's a mortgage broker, Haskell and PureScript. It's great fun. You should get involved. Um, and the paper I'm talking about is Declarative UIs are the future, and the future is Comon Attic, which is by this lovely Yorkshireman called Phil. Um, here is how you can get in touch with him. He does actually respond. He's a super cool guy. Um, and what it is, is it's, uh, it's a study of UIs and an attempt to find a kind of general language for talking about them um, in all their different forms. You know, what, what is the abstraction that captures the notion of a user interface that we can use and we can build on? And, um, you know, once we have that, we can take things we know are of that sort of thing and see what UIs arise from that idea. And you get this kind of back and forth and it, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, reaching back. And I'm doing it in JavaScript, uh, which I, I have since realized was a terrible, terrible idea. I, I got told, don't make it too, too technical, too scary, too mathsy. And being a bit too cocky, I went, you can do this in JavaScript. Um, it turns out I was five sixths right. And we'll, we'll see where I was wrong a bit later. Um, but as a start, we should probably go through the title. That would be good. Um, so what's a declarative UI? Uh, who works with front end at all? Like, this is good. This is great. I did uh, a similar sort of talk at a Haskell meetup, and like, no one knew what I was talking about. So who recognizes this logo? Everyone familiar? Um, for those that don't, this is React. This is a Facebook project, supremely popular. And this. Anyone remember? Yeah. This is uh, Elm. And um, the reason I've put these two up uh, is because they are kind of the de facto declarative UI frameworks we, and languages, sorry, that we, we use to express the idea of the virtual DOM and this, this declarative UI system. Um, and again, I can probably whiz through most of this if everyone knows it. But uh, here's some React. And I have this, this function that I'm going to call component informally. It takes some properties and it returns what looks effectively like HTML with some kind of custom variable in the middle. And of course, we all know better. We all know that what's actually going on is something like this. We pre-process it. We run it through a bunch of said scripts, whatever, whatever React is, and we get this out, which is our kind of, it's a data structure for representing what HTML looks like. So I, I guessed, and I think I tried to copy the actual one, but it was really long. But the, the kind of idea you have is, I have a tag, it's got a name, it's got some properties, in this case nothing interesting, and it's got some children, and I also have text. But the point is I'm building this specification for what, a, what a, an HTML page looks like. And what I then do with this uh, is I use these two functions. So this, this view specification I'm building can vary with respect to some state. Um, if you're familiar with React, we also have properties, it's kind of I'm just calling it state, all the same thing for this talk. I, I take some input that might be dynamic, I pass it through a function, and I get out a view. And then what I do is I take the old view and the new view, I look for the change in the view, and then I apply that to the DOM. The cool thing about this is I now supposedly don't have to care about the DOM anymore. Everything is just taken care of. Again, lots of caveats to this. But the, the basic idea is I can just write what I want to see, and something else will work out how to get there. And this is great, and we build all sorts of applications like this. Um, 
So that's declarative UIs. Uh, this is the future. This is robots fighting animals. The singularity is coming. So we've done this much. We've, we've completed this, and now we're on to the scary word of the title, which is comonadic, which, uh, which is comonad with ick on the end, and here's a comonad. Uh, everyone understand? Cool. Um, <laughs> I, I should say beforehand, I wrote uh, a ton of JavaScript in a past life explaining all sorts of type classes in Haskell, and one of them was Comonad. So if JavaScript is your gig, this is a much better description than I'm about to give you, and you should, you should check it out. Um, but at a base concept, uh, a, a Comonad is a, is a container, um, and what do I mean by that? Think of like an array. You don't have an array, you have an array of ints. Uh, if you've worked with like Elm type stuff, you've got a maybe of a string. You've got a task of whatever. So they are, it's a thing with of in the middle. Let's go with that formal, formal definition. Um, and it has two things that you can do with it, only two that it has to fill in. One is extract, which is I can take the thing out of that container and give it to you. And the other is extend, which is I'm, I'm going to give a rough definition and then kind of fix it on the way through. If, if I can summarize the thing somehow into this B, I can put that summary back, in, back inside that container. Um, I'm going to mess around with terms a bit, so let's, let's call this a context, because I think that's a useful intuition here. The W describes the context around the value inside it, and what I'm saying here is I can take a thing out of a context, and what I'm saying here is I can analyze that context to learn something and to, to transform the value. Um, and it's got a bunch of rules that you kind of, you don't need to worry too much about intrinsically what's going, sorry, am I in your way? Is that what's, cool, brilliant, nice, agile. Um, so, uh, yeah, a few laws that aren't, aren't particularly interesting. Um, the first one's uh, this, which is kind of, I don't know, the one I quite like, which is uh, if I extend something with extract, it's like doing nothing, because what I've done is I've kind of passed this function into here, and now my B is an A, because it's W, A to A, not W. If you don't understand Haskell, this is making no sense, and I'm really sorry. Um, but trust me on this, right? Uh, associativity is not important. The other one is this. If I have some kind of F which does this, I can either extend with that F, or I can just call it on the, on the W, A. I don't necessarily need to go through this noise. Um, but don't worry about any of that, if that doesn't make sense, because it's not, it's not strictly useful for this particular talk. Um, but let's look at a really simple example. So identity uh, is, a, is a type that is a comonet, and the reason is I can extract the value in it, um, and I can extend it, and all I do is I pass the entirety of the identity x into f and wrap it back up. So going back to type signatures, I pass the entirety of identity and do something with it, and then wrap it back up. Going to see a lot of this sort of thing. Um, and similarly, if you're feeling particularly keen, you can, you can check in your mind that these things will work. I probably promise you it does. Um, modulo typos and things. Uh, so here's a slightly more complicated example, a pair. Uh, it has a thing on the left and a thing on the right. Uh, here I'm saying extract gives me the thing on the right. Just arbitrarily. It makes sense in a minute. Um, so therefore, when I extend, I need to give the whole thing, the pair of left and right, to an F, and then I'll get my, my thing, and then I'll put it back in the context. So I'll put it back inside a pair of a left and the summary I've just got. So there's this constant pattern of take the thing, summarize it somehow, and put it back in the context. Um, and so here's a slightly more complicated example. Again, written in JavaScript. I've written a type synonym here because it's the only one I can understand. Um, to describe a store is to say, I have some kind of state, some state available, and a function from state to view. And the way I extract my value, which is my view, is I just apply the state to that function. And what I get out is, is the view. Um, and to extend it, what I do is I kind of, I, I pass f to a store that is exactly the same, except it's got this new, this new state. So I've said, when you, when you uh, render this, or sorry, when you update the state, you now, you now have access to the modification. Um, and this is probably best illustrated with an example. So here's, a, here's an app. I've written an app, at Web 2.0. 
this is a store. It's got some initial state, which is my name, if, in case anyone's forgotten it, and a render function which says put it in a string, hello, name, whatever. I can write this cool little function which says change the state. And the way I do that is I extend it by summarizing it to itself. It might sound a little weird, but now I've got a store of a store of a view. So I've, like, I've doubled it up. This is actually called duplicate, if you go and read the literature. Um, and then I render that with the state. And what happens is, going back, I've now got this store with that state. So I can give it a new state, and I can update it by doing this kind of pad it out and then render back to the original. Um, and then here's a, here's a slightly more interesting example of, like, I've taken this store, and I've taken out the state, and I've done something clever depending on what it is. In this case, it's a login screen. Got it. Um, and if this is looking familiar, uh, that's because this is React. This is everything React can actually do at the time being. No one's scowling. Um, almost everything React can do. But basically, the idea is I have some state, which I've called initial state now, and I have a render function. I pass state to it, and I get a view out, and that's, that's it. Like, React is a very, very uh, rough formulation of, of this idea. Um, so that's cool. We've got this, this store conad, which seems to be useful. We get React back. So maybe there's something to this idea that these are the only two functions we need. And then we can go on and we can say, well, what other types fit nicely into this model? And we have more, uh, which anyone who's done Haskell might recognize as a machine, a uh, state machine. Um, and what's going on here is we have the current view, and we have a function that says, if you can give me an event, like if something happens, I can give you a new more machine. And how we should read that is, if something happens, I can update the world. I can, I can change in some way. It's a state machine. So extract is now easy, because I just say, give me back the view. I've already got it. And extend now gets uh, super complicated, because what I want to say is the view is now a summarized version of the entire thing. Um, and handle is like, do the, do the transition, and then extend the next one. So I'm like building up this queue of extensions I want. So every time I, I step forward, I say, now do all the things and give me my new value. If it's getting a bit abstract, don't worry. Um, so here's a super simple uh, more machine app I wrote. We're now doing routing. Very progressive. Uh, this takes um, root, and there was no point adding data at all, uh, and switches on the root. And if the root is about, we return some comb on add. I picked identity because it's the easiest one. Or if we get home, I pick some common add. Again, identity is the easiest one. I've got my app, which has an initial view, which isn't very interesting, and this handle function. And now what I can do is handle root changes. So I can say, give me an action with you know, something I can look out for, and I will in some way update the application. And then I extract from the more this view, and I extract from the identity that I'm looking at this string. And what I get in the end is about. So I'm just I'm pulling things back out of this stack I'm building up. Um, and this is Redux. This is, this is absolutely Redux. The point is I now have a way of handling event changes, and I have a way that that modif uh, modifies my application. And the way it's traditionally done is with a big box of, uh, what do they call it, a store, global store, that holds all this, this state for me. Um, and this is super ugly. Uh, I, I don't want to have to do this, and I'm not sure I'll have time in this presentation to explain how to get rid of this. But basically what I want to do is talk about my entire app as one comonad, rather than a comonad of comonads of the thing I want to talk about. And there is a way around it. I'm not just shirking responsibility. Um, and Moore's actually, like, it's a specific case of something much scarier and more general, uh, which is co-free. Um, and here I've written container to mean one of those things, like a thing of another thing. Um, and all this says is, I have some value available, which I'm going to call the head, and I have a container of other cofries that are available that I'm going to call the tail. We will see why in a minute. Extract is easy. I give you back the head. And extend, I now map over the tail with extend. Uh, again, some type class knowledge will tell you that uh, a function from event is a container. So you'd never say it in English, but this is like a function from event of more machines. It's convoluted. But this is what's going on, right? In, in a sense, this is, is that map operation. Um, 
And map might be super scary if you're not familiar with this. Uh, map has this uh, type signature in JavaScript. Um, and what's going on here, this is not natural transformation, if that's what you're wondering. This is my this object to anyone familiar with JavaScript. What I'm saying is if, if I am a container of things of A, and you give me a function from A to B, I can give you a container of things of B. The really nice example here is array. If I'm, a, if I'm an array of ints, and you have a function from int to string, I can give you an array of strings. I can, I can just transform every element and give you back a thing. Um, for those interested, this does relate to comonads by this clever little derivation, which says mapping over a thing that is a comonad is the same as extending it by pulling out the thing and just applying the f. And then it gets boxed back up in the context, and we've done a map. Again, don't worry too much. Um, and you can do all sorts of things here. Uh, I've posted this because this is, uh, this is a really cool example. I hope this doesn't mean I've deleted my example. But you can use this to build uh, way more complicated routers than the last one. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of skimmed over more machines. They're, 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 they're more powerful than I gave them credit for. But the, the idea here is I'm, I'm kind of expressing something as, here's where I currently am, and here's the set of places I can go. Like my tail can be an array, or it can be a function. I'm saying in some way, I've got these kind of future states. Um, and this becomes supremely powerful. I didn't have the example. Um, so there were, the example I used was a sitemap. Um, I can get the code up in a minute. And let's say I have a sitemap that I'm representing with a cofree of arrays. So here, tail is an array of cofrees. And so every head is like a string, like this is the home, or this is about us, or this is refer, or this is refer slash terms and conditions, or whatever else. Um, and what I can do is I can write a function that says, count me all the nodes in this tree. And what extend then does is runs out on every node as if it was the top of a tree and then puts those back in the tree. So now I get a tree of summaries of subtrees. It's really cool. I will, uh, I'll dig out the example, I promise. Um, and so once you've done that and you've gone through a couple, then you start to ask, like, how do we combine them, right? Everything we've done so far is like this this nested structure, but sometimes that's not true of, of, uh, of UIs. Sometimes there's a kind of sibling relationship between things. Um, so here's my Twitter notifications. Um, and what you'll see here is there's an all tab and there's a mentions tab. My battery changed. That's annoying. Um, if, if you're watching, Ian, yes, there will be a video. Um, and what's going on here is we have this kind of, uh, we have a sum of left or right. We never want to show both. We want to focus on one or the other. And when we do, bring that to the front. Turns out this is beautifully modeled by the sum comonad. Because what we do here is we say now extract is, depending on which side you're on, give me the view within it. I've used true to mean left and false to mean right because I'm a terrible person. But that's, that's kind of what's going on here. I have this Boolean switch that tells me which side of this uh, comonad do I actually care about and give me the right view. So I can build UIs like this. Um, similarly, when I extend it, what I do is I give the left a summary of the thing looking at the left and the right a summary of the thing looking at the right. So both can now continue as if they're the focus. And so neither, neither subtree is aware that it's not the focus. We can kind of update the state, we can change our UI, whatever we want to do, and then when we focus, it'll be exactly as we want, which is great. Um, so here's exactly that. Again, I built Twitter.